stuff on the truck. No offense, man. It seems like I got some criminal coming up in this damn place. It's already started, but I don't trust. Um, personally, I don't feel like going back up in the drop yard all the time. Because I saw something ugly up in there a couple of times. I decided to, like, stay out, you know, stay hidden and out of the way. So it's like I'm playing fugitive for right now. And it ain't my fault. There's a couple of other people that was victims up in there too, but I ain't gonna call no names, I ain't gonna talk about it any further. So that's about it. Is it right now? Today is Sunday. It's a Sunday morning. I just came from the other side of town. Actually, I pulled away from this spot right after yeah, I did shoot a video of me being in the hotel, but I erased it. I didn't think it was important. I hope y'all heard that. I shot a video of me in the hotel shooting the camera, the video camera off the cell phone on that black Volvo way downstairs in the parking lot at night. I said, nah, this is just exaggeration. I don't think they want to see that. I didn't feel like making myself look like a fool, so I erased it. I could have, I could have showed it to you, but I said, nah, it's not important. So, yeah, I was just driving from um, somewhere by the Target store, the plaza. There's a driver's license office right there. I usually hang out next to it. It's like a clean, decent parking lot. And um, I usually hang out there every once in a while on the weekends and a couple of other car drivers do the same so I just came back over here about four miles away so I'm just letting the truck stay warm I'm trying to study the fuel filter to see where it's at you see it's like I'm kind of cleaning out the fuel tank a different way I'm going right through the fuel separator and the fuel filter so I'm gonna just cycle it a couple of times, switch them a couple of times, switch the uh, fresh ones. Yeah, here's here here here's the shit I was talking about. I gotta be careful. All right. As you can see, I ain't parking my truck that much up in there. It seemed like they got me back in the white Kenworth again. It took me out at 2.30 because they said that some guy was on vacation. So he had to get it back. So now I'm back in this white Kenworth. Oh, shit. Yeah. They said I had to put my stuff back in. So here it is. I'm back in it. Same truck that I came in when I first got the job. They put it back in. Let me tell you what was done to this. This has new gears, fresh set of gears in the gearbox. Also fresh all um let me see one all three axles one two three all six axles six uh drums brake drums all of them got fresh uh brake shoes uh what else the oil is like water it's brand new. The oil is brand new. It had a recent oil change. The gears in the transmission are refresh. They're brand new inside the gearbox. The clutch is also brand new. The clutch pedal isn't stiff anymore. It's like tender. Now it's stiff when it's um cold, but when it's I guess he he put a different clutch in there. Probably one of them um engine driven types hydraulic pressure types you know like when you turn the truck on it's, it's you know it feels soft not like the solid type the solid spring type but anyways so right now i only came here to get the laundry 
so I could do my laundry. That's it. I might be using this truck anyway because the other one kind of got a filter problem. I mean, not a filter problem, but you know, the fuel tank is kind of dirty. So, I'm not too sure. I was thinking of using the other one. can't make up my mind. I don't know what to I'm trying to figure out something. Let me double check, make sure nothing didn't get stolen in here. Yeah, this is still here. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, all of that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, the other guy had his mattress over here, so I took it out. Uh, they said um, it had to go back in the, the black Kenworth over there because um, he owns it. So that's the reason why I don't have no mattress at the bottom. The thing is, the one in the other truck I was driving is in there, but I don't feel like going through all of that. I think he already got that truck anyway. It, my boss told me to clear my, clear my stuff out and put it back into the white Kenworth. So it seemed like... Now since he kind of rebuilt this truck halfway, he rebuilt the transmission, he overhauled the transmission. So he overhauled the clutch, the transmission, and the brakes, and the oil change. So I got another fresh life on this truck right here. So yeah, this one is almost close to 1 million miles itself. You're close, getting close. It's almost as close as I've all. All right, right now I can't really make up my mind. I'm thinking I probably better leave that Volvo over there and come over into this truck. It's probably much better. truck over here. Okay. I gotta pay attention to it. Like I said, I'd rather bring myself to somebody else's level just so they can understand where I'm coming from. Um, I said it before. There's something criminal up in this yard that uh, not only that, my boss, my boss said that he confronted the asshole, and he said he almost beat him up. My boss almost beat him up, because, you know, he likes messing with a lot of people, but I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm just keep that shit to myself. You see why I ain't going back up in there, because I'm not the only victim talking about it. Um, I had one of my co-workers, one of my fellow drivers, actually told me the same thing. And not only that, the mechanic, one of my mechanics got profiled. They, uh, he got called a racial slur. So I'm not going to say nothing about that either. Alright. Hey, that's the dude that owned the orange, uh, the orange freight liner. That's the one selling the truck. My truck used to be over there, it used to be parked over there, but I don't know. It seemed like the way shit's going nowadays, I have to change courses, man. <laughs> I mean, a boss, I think, no, the mechanic, he told me that that uh, the drop yard is rented by our company and other truck companies. So the owner of the drop yard 
I think he's charging, he already charged everybody $300 a spot. So, mechanic says, you see, he's telling me things I didn't know about yet. So, the spot where my Volvo once was, and that other one, is also $300 each. And like, the spot doesn't matter. It's, be, it being on the yard is gonna be $300 anyway. It doesn't matter where you park. It's called three, it's, it's $300. So, even though I'm not using it, I'm still, well, I'm not being charged $300, but he told me that. He told me, um, I guess I got off lucky because they were already paying the rent anyway. And I asked him a question, am I paying the $300 now? Now since y'all mentioned if I went owner operator, I'm gonna be paying for the trailer, right? And I'm not buying a trailer. So I'm gonna be renting your trailer. And he said, no, you're not paying for the spot. We are. Since it's, you know, since you bought the truck from us and it's already there, you know, we'll go ahead and finish paying for it. So I guess he just, he decided to cut me some slack. Okay, I could have swear he would have charged me of this. As you can see, this truck is black with no stickers on it. No stickers at all. I peel it off. If the sticker is gone, it's all black, not for hire. Personal use on it. Yeah, I took this to the hotel, um, I think it was Friday night, and I came on Saturday. Go ahead and take a look at the fuel filter. It seemed like the best way to go. Um, cycle the entire. Shit, what am I doing? I'm putting the Kenworth key inside of the truck. It's more like I'm cycling the entire two uh, fuel tanks. I'm gonna cycle it like what, just at one time, and then I fill it up with fuel the second time. You know, I'm just—it might be a waste of fuel filters, but I'm not—it's not gonna stay like that forever. I told the mechanic that, and he said, "Yeah, that it could work that way too." But the thing is, I don't have time to be paying extra. I'm not going to feed these, you know, you know, them people, them, them people up north, like in the plains, the plains, Illinois. I'm not going to feed them my money and say, well, there they told me they're going to take out, they're going to have to take out both of the fuel tanks and it's going to take a couple of days and what? You over there tell me some shit, yeah, as far as story, I don't want to hear. I said, I ain't planning on going that far. Just go ahead and clean the bowl in the separator and, you know, leave it at that because I ain't got the money to pay for it. All I had was like, what, uh, 600 bucks. So he said it's like two, two something an hour, 222, 270, it came up to 270. So he actually cleaned the bowl and that, that was before. But now the second time, I just I just recently changed the filter and the separator. I bought me another filter and separator right after that. And here I am, keep using it already. Since the last two, three days. So it's like, you know, I'm just going through this. I'm going, I'm taking the cheap, the cheaper way out. But I don't have a choice. I don't, you know, I can't cough up all that money right now. I'm, I'm almost broke, so. But I did get the... What do you call it? I forgot. That video that I erased, it did have the brand new um, speed sensor in there. I'll show it to you in a while. Let me see. Uh, I'll go ahead and look underneath a little again. Yeah, I'm going to show you the speed sensor. It's brand new. The speedometer, the needle is working.
Yeah, the needle is working now. The needle is working. When I bought it over the parts counter, I didn't tell them to diagnose it. They didn't diagnose it. They didn't do so bad, but I need a test driver though. Still need a test driver. Front bumper went up against that frame. Gonna have to back the truck up. That deer guard is too close to that um, that chassis stub over there. So I gotta make sure the truck can see the gravity is down forward. All right, I'm backing it up. This is all that dangerous thing on the about that. Same on this one too. Yeah, this one is worse. This one's worse. something in my oh yeah I, forgot. I don't know if I could see it out if I pull the lid on board damn I don't want to go underneath the truck for that I guess I'll go ahead and try something different As soon as they change the speed sensor, it was past working already. They didn't have to do no test on it. I just tell them to knock it out, take it off, and replace it. And as soon as I got in the truck, it was almost better than driving a Kenworth. Oh, I could hear that. You could hear the tanks and say that. Oh, I changed, I changed the valve for the... What do you call it? The pressure release valve for the tank. I, I, I did that last night, yesterday evening. I didn't do so much of a good job doing this. I was in a hurry, so. But this is it right here. I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to go underneath there. I'll try, I don't know.
you so Ah, uh, there it is. I see it. Hold on. You get a flashlight. It's much better when you take off the panel. You take the firing off. There it is. Brand new. Right there. I could have swore you must have did something to see if I could get a close look. There it is. I thought that was a position sensor. Mechanic told me it's a speed sensor. That's what controls the needle, but it also does something else. That's what I was trying to tell him. <coughs> it, it should control the RPM on the truck as well. Ripped up in this damn thing. Shoot. It should control the RPM. Like um like the way it was before. The way it was before. Uh when the needle wasn't working. When the needle didn't work, the RPM only maxed out like Close to 1400, right? Between 30 and 14. Well, I told him when I used to drive um, FFE's truck, F, you know, um, when I used to drive for this truck company, FFE, when I drove their brand new um, 2004 Freightliner Century, right? This was at 10 speed. Yeah, I said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. Um, I remember, yeah, one time I was climbing this hill in Pennsylvania and the truck started to act funny so I got nervous and I cut the engine off right in the middle of the road underneath them trees. And I put my emergency flashes on and cut the truck off, opened the engine. I even went underneath the truck just to see what was wrong. I couldn't tell what was wrong. Back in them days, I didn't know nothing about speed sensors. So, you know, I called breakdown. And I told breakdown and described, you know, the situation. So I told him in each gear, whenever, whenever I max out this throttle, it only maxes out maybe 13, 1400 RPM. So I gotta hurry up and switch gears just to upgrade the speed. That's the same thing I've been trying to tell the mechanic here for this company, but he's not familiar with it. He said he's never heard of that. So I guess, you know, the kind of problem I'm describing is not in everybody's category. But anyways, they break down from FFE. They told me that the speed sensors are bad or defect. I think they told me that the speed sensors are recall, not on the Volvo, on the Freightliner Sentry, the new 24s that came, not 24s, the 2004s that came out back then and that was a 10 speed um tranny that was a tra 10 speed transmission so now since they told me what it is they say i gotta bring it to the shop and take out the old speed you know take out the speed sensors that's defect and put in some other ones so these are i don't think these are recalls this truck has just passed 1 million miles that's the reason why the speed sensors went bad. Not only that, I could show you on the invoice if I can find it. It should be on the dashboard because I got so many. The invoice, the repair order, or the RO, whatever they call it. The repair order says the tech had to, the tech described it in detail. He said he had to tear it off. He had to tear pieces of it off because it was so old and seized up. He said it wouldn't come out. So he had to destroy the old speed sensor and then he put a new one in. He had to clean out the guts and everything. So he put a new one in. And that's the reason why I told that service writer. The reason why I didn't start 
I didn't make any attempts trying to take the old one off because I could tell by looking at it, it's not going to go anywhere. It's dinosaur old. And that's the reason why I said, you know, I'm not going to make... That's the reason why I paid 321 or $302 or whatever I paid the second time. I paid $302 for labor just for them to take it off and put that on. So now since it's on, the needle is working. Not only the needle is working. Um... The RPMs can go past 1400 into 15 and then 16. So that means it is, you see, I got background experience knowing about that. It's in my category since 2003 or four. Now it's like, <clears throat> I didn't remember it yet. It's just that having this problem jogged my memory. And I said, oh yeah, I remember. It happened at FFE struck one time. And I guess it must be the same on this one. Well, yeah, that's that's part of it. But the thing is, um, not only, you see, I, I see it, I said it ahead of time. I said, hold on. I said it ahead of time. When the speed sensors get defective, it's going to affect the RPM gauge, the speed of the truck. And what else? It's going to affect, um, yeah, the needle as well. I don't remember it affecting the needle and FFE's truck. It probably did. I don't remember. I can't remember. Maybe it did. I don't remember that part. It will affect the speedometer needle, RPM gauge, and the power. The power to the truck as well. That means you cannot max out, let's say, if you was in fourth gear, you're supposed to go like what? 30, 35, 40, you probably could max out past 35. You're supposed to go 40. You're supposed to go at least somewhere between 35 and 40, but it won't let you because the speed sensor is um, defective. It might affect the TPS sensor, you know, which, which allow you to get power. But now since it already knocked out two of those problems, it also did something additional I was not familiar with. The engine brake comes on a lot quicker. It's not as strong though, because this truck is old. It's gonna need a valve lash adjustment now that, you know, for the timing to get retarded in the valve so the end, the jake brake, so the engine brake. Well, the jake brake or the engine brake, brake comes on quicker. It comes on a lot quicker than the Kenworth. That black Kenworth I was driving, it takes like five seconds or more for the engine brake to come on. But the speed sensor and everything else works on that truck. This one, as soon as it's like, what was it? As soon as I get off the throttle like this, and then it goes like that. It gets, you know, the engine brake comes on, but before, when the speed sensor wasn't working, this is what happened. And then, you know, then you hear it. But now since the speed sensor is in, it takes about two seconds or so, and then it comes on. The speed sensor, that brand new speed sensor did like three. Instead of two things that I'm familiar with, it did a third thing that I'm not familiar with. So, there you go. I'm just, you know, I'm just learning as I go along. I'm going to see if I can put this back on. Changing the fuel filter yesterday and I made a mess up front. I hope they don't cuss me or so. Telling me that city ordinance and all that. Alright. <clears throat> so far I got that clear. I was wondering. Maybe I better leave this truck right here. We'll go over to the next one. Uh, shoot. Mm, I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I'll probably take a chance. I don't know. Damn. 
Oh shoot, this video is like what, 40 minutes? All right, I'll, I'll put it into the next one. I'll probably, I'll probably take this truck to the laundromat and then come back, I don't know. I'm not too, I'm not too really keen on doing that, but I'll go ahead and cut this video for right now.